Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. We're joined by Mike Gerben from Excel is Fun. This is episode 82, Allow Below Limit. Hey, Mike. All right, welcome back. Uh, so, uh, you received this question from A Prima at uh, YouTube and this one, this one threw me for a loop, I got to tell you. Uh, they have some product names here and you can see that you can choose from the list. So they have a data validation set up there and then they want to make sure that the amount entered is less, less than this upper limit over here in this table. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I thought VLOOKUP, uh, conditional formatting I think would be relatively easy, but to do data validation, uh, this one, this is tough. I knew that there was a custom option, custom, but then how do you write a formula uh, that looks to see if the value in B2 is less than a lookup based on A2. So we try this equal B2 less than or equal to the lookup of A2 comma. All right, now I got to get the address for that table. So I'm just going to click there. We'll have to press F4 at that point, comma 2, comma false. All right, and let's assume that this is going to work. Uh, and the error alert is going to be custom. It's going to say uh, price too high. Um, the price entered is above the limit. Please try again. Well, wouldn't it be cool if we could get the actual limit there in the message? I don't think there's any way that we can do that. Uh, and we click OK. Now, we have to copy that validation down. So I control C and I'm going to use paste special. So I'll ES and paste validation, OK, and let's try it here. So for Bell and it looks like uh, 15 should work. Great, 99 will not. Uh, great, that's working. Cancel, let's try something else. Uh, and we go with Aspen. All right, so see that 15 is already there. Uh, that's one place where validation falls apart. Uh, we'll try 11, that works, and try 13. And it does not work. Okay, so it's it's getting it. Um, I initially thought that I could embed this VLOOKUP table right in the validation, but when I tried that, uh, it said no, you're not allowed to use array constants in validation. What's up with that? That's crazy. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. I love that data validation custom with the true false logical formula using VLOOKUP. I think I'll actually steal exactly that formula but I'll do it with conditional formatting. Another thing I like about uh, your video, Mr. Sal, I love that. Copy and then paste special validation only. All right, so I want to be able to put an Aspen here, and then if I type 99 here, instead of the cell preventing me from putting in, I want it to sh flash a color like red. If I put something less than the upper end from this lookup table here for Aspen, I want it to have no color. All right, now I'm going to do conditional formatting. So I'm going to highlight all of the cells. And the active cell right there, I'm actually going to build a true-false format. In fact, why don't I just build it here in the cells and then copy it and paste it up there? Sometimes it's easier to see the, um, the true-false format in the cells before you do uh, conditional formatting, or for that matter, data validation also. All right, so equals, hey, is anything in this cell? And we want it to show true when it's above, because that conditional formatting needs to be applied when it's above, which means a, v a violation of the rule. Anytime that is greater than VLOOKUP. And the lookup value is going to be um, the product name, comma, here's the table, F4 to lock it, comma. We're looking up a value here, returning the value here, so that's the second column of our lookup table. And finally, true or false, exact match. We're looking up words, so I'm going to put a 0 for false. All right, so then I'm going to copy this down. And you can see what will happen now is if I put 99 here, this will be true. The falses and the errors will be ignored. Conditional formatting will not be applied. Now, important, you got to copy. Wherever you copy your formula, I'm going to copy mine from the top cell in the range. I'm going to copy it. And then when I highlight the range, that first cell, because I took this first formula right here, has to be the active cell. And then I go up to Conditional Formatting in the uh, Home Ribbon Manage Rules, or Alt-OD. New rule. I'm going to paste it right here, Control-V, and then do some formatting. 
Let's see, font, I'll do a light font and a dark value color for fill. Click OK, click OK. Oh, so there it is. All right, data validation, if you applied it and there was a value there, it didn't really give you a signal. All right, so now if I type 150, it doesn't prevent me from putting in, but it does give me a color. When I go below, boom, it works. So now I select this one here, quad. I type in 55, no way, but 22, no way also. Quad is 19. So we'll put it in 18, and then there we are allowed. And certainly we can uh, change this to, let's see, 14. Let's change this to aspirin, right? And so immediately, even though there was something in the cell, a conditional formatting says, hey, that's red, you're not allowed. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. So hey Mike, that's cool. I like the conditional formatting, especially if they go back and change the value later. It uh, still highlights in red. Your trick with uh, entering the formula in the cell first, you know, I got burned by that on the data validation because I originally set up a VLOOKUP and I put an array constant in there. I used your trick, selected the range, pressed F9, and of course that worked in the cell. Uh, but I went to the data validation. It said, eh, can't do that. Can't have an array constant in data validation. Which, if you think about it is really kind of silly um, but anyway that's the way it goes all right well hey i want to thank everyone for stopping by we'll see you next week for another dueling excel podcast from mr excel and excel is fun